What's going on, Miles? Hey, Brian. Happy Friday. And, uh, you know, the reason we're running a bit late today is because (laughs) uh, I got a call from you, a video call. I was like, okay, Brian doesn't normally just video call me out of nowhere. I was like, hey, Brian, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, oh, yeah, just... uh, See you playing Hell Divers too uh, when we've got a show like in three minutes. And I was like, "What?" I was like, "Our clock stayed. And then I remembered yeah. the uh, clock spring forward in the states and the UK on different days because you know why do it at the same time? That would be far less confusing. So, um, yeah, I, dude, I, uh, I love are. that you're trying to take responsibility for this, but I didn't even set up the live stream until about like 15 minutes ago. So, like. But neither one of us was really uh, ready to do a show. It was a team effort. Today. Team effort. Right. It, it took a team for us to be this late. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Oh, man. Um, so we're we're an hour closer. And then obviously next week we'll be even closer because uh, this time next week we'll all be hanging out at uh, PAX East, which is so surreal to think about. It doesn't even feel like it's happening but it doesn't feel that um, way i think i think it's because i'm in denial but uh but we'll yeah. once we get there it'll be hard to deny uh all right dude let's uh let's let's get this show started we've got a lot to talk about um uh, i think i don't know I, I threw together some shit hopefully it'll be interesting <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure these guys are along for the ride right you guys are you guys all along for the ride out there let's fucking do this This is PSVR Gamescast Live. We film live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, Friday, right here on YouTube. We do it live 6 p.m. Eastern for your viewing pleasure. Um, we don't forget about those out there who need some oral pleasure, though. Uh, that's why our good friend Rypop puts us up on podcast services of your choice. And then, for all the people who just can't stand to sit through an hour or two of me and my co-host yapping away, uh, then Rody the Gamecat General puts timestamps into the show after the fact. My name is Brian Pop, Nishan right here, PSVR without parole. Nishan over here to my left, you're right. It's Miles Dyer from youtube.com slash Miles. What's going on, bud? Hey, Brian. Hey, Game Cats. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, we are just days away now from uh, PAX East. Uh, I've got my, my monies, my American dollar bills, <laughs> you know, because that's what it's about. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's kind of, um, it, it still hasn't sunken in yet. Um, and it will do, obviously, once I'm on the flight and out there. Um, but I'm going to be heading out on Wednesday. Most people are heading, heading in on the Thursday. Um, going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be great um, seeing everyone there. But, Dude, uh, the number of messages I've gotten from, uh, from you know, personal messages or professional messages, people from you know the the industry that want to like meet up, people like friends that are going to be there, um, you know, I mean, you you name it, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy King. Uh, I mean, dude, I've got so many messages from people, all in re- in regards to Pax East and shit that's happening. And people are trying to plan stuff, and I'm just like, dude, you don't you don't even know. You don't even know. I I I just don't have time to respond to everybody, and I see the messages come through and go, okay, I'm going to spend like an hour later today just responding to messages about packs. Uh, I have no no idea. No, no idea, man. This this week has been insane. Uh, you guys know I've had some personal stuff going on. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm losing a day this weekend as well uh, for some other stuff going on, and I have so much to do. Uh, and we almost didn't do this show today because last night, I mean, this is this is definitely some inside baseball stuff you probably don't need to know about. And also keep in mind that the game's not out yet and that the developers are now aware because I told them. I was trying to get the Patreon footage and review footage for a playthrough of Twilight Zone last night on PSVR 2. And I played through the entire campaign in one sitting because uh, it's not very long. By the end of the first episode, my stomach was in a knot and I wanted to vomit. And that lasted, I was like, man, it'll be fine. When I go to bed, I'll like, I'll sleep it off and I'll wake up today and be fine. I just got out of bed. I was nauseous all day. My head was pounding all day. I just got out of bed like an hour ago. Um, 
and let the and let the uh, let the dudes over at VR Monkey know like something's not right. Like your smooth turning is shit. The frame rate is not. It's it, it's definitely reprojected and it's very very stuttery. Um, and uh, and and they're aware and they're trying to just before before launch get it up to like ninety native or something to make it all better. Um, but holy crap, dude, it was not a good time. Also, that game's terrible. Like that's that's so just sorry. The, the fact you weren't feeling great was all because of the the lack of comfort in the headset. I, I would say that's probably a good chunk of it. I mean, you wake up with a pounding headache and 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 you're nauseous. Just as you, I mean, I know I was nauseous last sick last night because of the game. I don't know if that's what carried over all day today. I'm assuming sure. it did, right? Um, because yeah. it's exactly how I felt when I went to bed last night, and uh, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Um, and so I shouldn't have pushed through. That was my fault. Um, but at the same time, like you know, this is supposed to be this game's supposed to be ready for release. Uh, sirens on my end. Uh, anyway, we'll keep you updated on the status of Twilight Zone. Um, also, uh, just a heads up, game's not very good. Uh, I know you've probably heard some not great things from the uh, from from the quest side of things when when the game first came out. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, there's a good reason. There's a good reason why 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 you haven't heard great things. Uh, it's got some very cool original concepts. But overall, it's just it's just bad. Like it's just it's not well delivered, and uh, I just I just I just don't think it's very good, man. I, the entire second uh, episode I think is just filler. It's 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 throwaway. Uh, and there's like one cool thing that happens in the third uh, episode, and the whole idea surrounding the first episode is very cool. Uh, and if anyone who played it on Quest, you know, um, they get to, it, it's focused a lot on uh, voice commands. And, you know, you it, it does some voice calibration stuff at the beginning of the game. And the way that all works together is very cool. But then it ultimately ends up in a game that was clearly designed by people who don't know how to make a good game, which is really sad. Um, it's like a lot of great ideas, but just cannot fucking recommend. Uh, and definitely not in the state that it's in now. So we'll keep you posted on that as, it, as things progress. Wow. That's a real shame. Real shame. Yeah. Uh, but you know it's not a real shame, Miles. I might be sick, but I but I won't stop the segues. Uh, and that's that this Sunday's multiplayer has been decided by you guys. Don't forget, every 2 p.m. Eastern... <clears throat> I'm sorry, every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, everybody get, gets together on our Discord. Click the link in the description below to go join that. And uh, Professor Lilith puts together the multiplayer meetup. You guys vote on what games you want to play. The voting has been tallied. And this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, March 17th, everybody will be playing. Alvo. Nice. Yep. Miles, uh, other than Helldivers 2, you've been playing anything fun? <laughs> um, yeah, I've I mean, been playing a few games this you week. Can, you can talk about um, Helldivers if you want to. I don't care. This, nah, this is going to be a pretty laid-back show. Yeah, no. Um, I've, I've been playing quite a bit of VR experiences this week. Um, one of my favorite things was because of, um, as I mentioned, I've been doing work for uh, Rapid Eye Movers with C-Smash uh, VRS, which means I've got a Quest 3. And it just came to my mind uh, last weekend. Oh, I could buy Walkabout Mini Golf for the headset. I set up my own MetaQuest account, bought Walkabout Mini Golf. And normally, you know, when I'm showing my parents VR, I'll be sat on the couch watching the social screen, enjoying it. But I was able to get them to stand in the kitchen with the Quest headset. Uh, and I got to play a round of walkabout mini golf with uh, my mum, uh, with my dad, and then with my mum, and uh, it nice. was the most amazing time. I mean, there's nothing new about playing multiplayer in VR, but I think when you're showing a, a close family member uh, who um, you, you know who likes VR, but it's always quite a separate experience where you put them in the headset, and you know when you're trying to point stuff out on the social screen you go no no to your right and mm -hmm. and stuff like that and you're trying to get a sense of what they're looking at to be present in the in in the vr space and able to literally point and and show stuff um it was really really great and they both really loved it but um played around with each of them so 18 holes with each of them and then um before i got to the end of a round of golf with my dad um he was telling me the battery was low <laughs> And uh, I was like, really already? And, um, you know, there are things you can do to make the battery life on the Quest 3 last longer. But if you want, you know, the, 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 the top refresh rate and, you know, the, 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 the full brightness, um, 
it, it, it's, a, it's a shame. But at the same time, it's a great headset. And what I do like about the Quest 3 is the reason I was on the PSVR 2 and I put them on the Quest 3 was they literally put the headset on and they're ready to go. They don't have to worry about finding the sweet spot with the with the PSVR 2 headset, which takes a little bit more, t- you know, tweaking. Um, and so, yeah, um, played a bit of Walkabout Mini Golf. I actually played uh, a lot more of the Daft Punk uh, Beat Saber DLC this week. I did um, today as a part of my workout routine, I did the Expert Plus of the 11 minute song. Uh, and my goodness, I mean, I had no fail on because I would have failed halfway through. Some of the rudiments are ridiculous, but it was a really, really good workout. And uh, yeah, I love what they've done with that. And it is actually the first DLC where they've incorporated live music, which um, I hadn't really thought about before, which was was cool to see. Um, and then just diving into Knock here and there. And there's a few other games which can't talk about at the moment. Um, but uh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great games, and also because I'm not at home yet, and I'm not going to be fully living at home for for a good couple of weeks. I'm just craving to get back to live streaming VR games. There's a lot of VR games I've put on hold just because obviously I want my first impressions to be live. Obviously, I'll play them if we're going to be talking about them specifically on the show. Um, but there's just so many games. I think there's like eight to ten now that I just want to get on board with uh, and play. So I miss doing that. Um, one game I almost was going to do early. Um, People have seen that Madison VR had been um, handed out to some creators who got to play a bit early. Um, to, to the dismay of Brian and the others, um, I uh, turned down the offer uh, just because I said if I was to play Madison, I want my first. I'm, I'm only going to play it once because I'm so terrified and I want that to be live, whereas this would be playing on my own recording it, which would have been great. Right. Um, but also it is like um, sort of a demo. Uh, it's, it's a demo. It's like it can take half an hour to complete um some of the people i've spoken to who've played who, who played the demo said actually it took them about an hour to an hour and a half but they obviously edited it down to about half an hour a lot of it to do with like learning how to interact with the environments and stuff um because um uh in some of them i've seen like when it comes to like peering through holes and stuff you have to like pull the trigger over the sort of the magnifying glass icon so there's still there's a few bits in the game that seem like halfway they're not fully you know vr immersive however looks amazing in the headset and is like super super terrifying which is what we expect so um i'm super super stoked for for madison vr um i think it's gonna be a very very special release that's great man that's great yeah uh definitely a lot of uh a lot of great stuff coming our way um i did see uh i did see a comment from uh waleed uh, one of our loyal game cats who uh, who was actually making a suggestion about Gamescast and being like, hey, when you know, uh, maybe maybe you should start the show, start Gamescast with the topic that's plastered across, uh, you know, the title of the uh, title of the video in the in the thumbnail, because by the time you get to your major topic, uh, you're out of steam and like you only spend a couple minutes on it, uh, and yep. and, that, and that was in relation to Madison, um, because you know uh, Wednesday show was all you know VR two horror is back, you know we're like bam 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 we listed off like four different horror games that now have release dates and, and coming soon and can't wait to play, uh, and and he said he tuned in for Madison, and I felt bad because like if we were you know if I had it if I had access um, to the dev kits you know, playing this early release of Madison, uh, we definitely would have spent a lot of time on it. But but me personally, I don't know any more information than I did a couple of weeks ago, other than, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's on track. And it sounds like it's going to be good, you know, but I'm not spoiling it for myself by watching other people's streams or reading reviews. Yeah. Uh, and so cause I, I think I, I did. I did actually tell myself I was going to read through um, the God is a Geek uh, review because it's one of the there's few a, yeah there's a few written articles, articles that have been done which is probably a good way of doing it right because then right. it's impressions of actually explicitly seeing what's going on yeah because i don't want to watch any video and so I, and so i started reading through the god is a geek one and you know as well written as it was they started off by saying uh, i don't you know I, i've never played a horror game in vr and immediately i was like well then your opinion no offense to them over there your opinion does not help me whatsoever because i need to hear an opinion from somebody who plays a lot of vr horror and says well where does this rank within that you know and, and it's something i'm trying to i try to be cognizant of like you know when i when i reviewed little cities this week i was like i better go play some cities vr because otherwise people would be like well what the fuck is the difference between this and that you know you, you gotta you gotta try to have some kind of context uh and sometimes i can do that and sometimes i can't do that and i'm not believing that god is a geek guy whatsoever at all um because you know you probably go over there for for that person's opinion 
right? And so it's like, cool. Yeah. That works. Um, and so anyway, so th that's the only article I started reading through and then just stopped because I was like, well, this isn't going to really help me. But I am uh, I am very intrigued because it can, when we hear things like it's going to be like, you know, running at 90 native, uh, I'm like, this is, this just makes me happy, man. This just makes me happy because it, it means that people are kind of coming to terms and figuring out what works on PSVR 2, what, what PSVR 2 gamers are looking for, especially until the reprojection system is fixed. It, it means that these developers are coming into their own and figuring this shit out and saying, and, and actually uh, having specific targets for, for PSVR 2 that they don't have in other places. You know, I hear from so many developers saying, hey, we're using um, dynamic foveated rendering, you know, for eye tracking. And, and, and then, you know, in the, but this, in the center focal spot is 1.8 times super sampled. And I'm like, that's really fucking sharp. That's really sharp, but also unnecessary, right? So, like, if, if you can if, if you can scale that down and use the extra resources to you know to to push it to 90 frames per second, then then wonderful. And I think and I think that's what developers are starting to realize, like what what we're looking for, what really sells, uh, what what PSVR two gamers get excited about. And so, I think we're entering like this new era. You know, even when I told you know VR Monkey about the Twilight Zone issues, he was like, ah, oh, he's like, let me. I, I think he's like, I think we can probably fix that, you know, like, cause those guys are really, um, really on top of their shit. So, um, dude, let's talk about a couple tips real quick here. We got not sure Brando with the $10 tip says, uh, too bad. You have to suffer for us. Love all of you. Uh, that's what I'm here for, man. That's what I'm here for. I do apologize though. Cause it does mean that like, you know, my, my, my whole schedule is thrown off this week. Uh, I feel terrible for, uh, for cause cube comes out tomorrow. I, I've had Cube for a week. I've not had time to play Cube for more than an hour. And so I feel bad. That review is not going to be out tomorrow. Not if I want it to be a proper review. So I feel terrible about that. Um, but uh, but thank you guys for, you know, your constant understanding. You're, you're always, you know, people are always trying to make me feel better about the situations. And, you know, I'm, I don't know. I just... I, I feel I always feel like I'm letting you guys down and you guys are always telling me that I'm not. So uh so thank you very much for allowing me to do this and and you know do it in the style that I need to. Come on, buddy, come on, get up here. <laughs> get up here. She's like she's like just skulking around meowing. Um time to play. Oh dude, also Miles, before I forget, uh that microphone that you're holding to your mouth right now, um, yeah. this is the one you use during your live streams, right? Yeah. Dude, I love this mic. Uh, you use it. You so I, it, yeah, yeah. So I purchased it uh, based on the sound of your live stream. So I was like, "This sounds really good." You sent me the link, the Amazon link, and I and I bought it right away without even looking into it. Just I need this. I finally set it up, dude. Playing Twilight Zone and and you know getting that uh getting those Patreon streams set up. I, I was like, "Well, this this Twilight Zone will be the test to see if this microphone is what I'm looking for." And holy shit, dude, it sounds so much better than the one I was using before. That's all staticky and distorted. It sounds very quality. Yeah. You know, you always sound good, but, you know, everybody has different voices. And so sometimes things just don't sound as good and for one person acoustics. as you do for There's other. a lot of factors that make for good sound, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Um, it's one of those things of it's only when I go back to other microphones, I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, that's a, that's a lot better. No, so it's a really cool microphone. And... Um, uh, the only issue I have with it, and maybe it's because of the positioning, is it means I can't wear collars. Because if I wear any collars, because in v when you're doing VR, you're turning your head around. When you're playing other games, you're keeping your head straight so you don't have to worry. But like if you're turning around and moving your arms, it keeps hitting the collar and ruffling and stuff. And so getting the positioning right is it can be quite difficult. But it's um it's called the I think it's called the mod mic anti Leon Lion. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I bought it through I'll, the box away immediately. To be honest, I need to start doing that thing in the description of my videos of you know what what gear do I use because it's uh, it, it's it's definitely a common question. Um, but yeah. Um, well, and, and on that topic, I do want to uh, give a shout out to AJ and apologize because I, uh, on Wednesday's show, um, you know, we talk about the stuff that we like, we talk about the stuff that we use. Sometimes you have to go through a couple different things to figure out what you like, um, and it sounds like I was being very uh, uh, mean when I was talking about the real optics lenses versus the VR rocks. Um, and I apologize. I, you guys know that that's never my intention to insult my co host or to talk shit about anybody. Not, not, not in any way over, you know, the sense of just having fun and, 
you know, I'll, I'll, it's, it's, all, it's all supposed to be in jest. It's all supposed to be a good time. And I, and I did get a message saying, hey, you were really fucking tough on AJ on Wednesday show. And I was like, what, what, what did I do? But I, I don't even realize like, and so, you know, some, sometimes people are in on the inside jokes and some people, and then sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not a fucking comedian, man. Like I'll make jokes and they don't come across. Right. So I do want to apologize. I want everybody to know that, like, I totally respect my co-hosts and that, um, if AJ loves the VR rock lenses, then, then great. That wasn't my intention to make it seem like they were, uh, bad. I just, I just love the re real optics ones. Um, and, uh, you know, I know there's people out there that like the VR rocks as well. So uh, I just wanted to get that out there and make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, time to play VR with the two quid says I'm missing teen Titan Robin. The blinds are not fun. <laughs> Don't ask me. I have no idea. I mean, I, so um, back when I had the bookshelves behind me, that's, that's what you must be talking about. Oh, I, 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 um, yeah, I, I've got a bunch of Batman and Robin stuff around here, and so there was a Teen Titan gotcha. Robin plushie up there. Uh, the blinds suck. I hate the blinds. They look dirty, and uh, probably because they are. Um, but yeah, with the time change, uh, the light just blares in, and then I'm totally silhouetted. I wish I had the bookshelves back. Um, uh, but I feel you time to play. ET.2K9.now with a $50 tip. Dude, keeping the lights on. Thank you very much. Says, wish I could go to the meetup. Here's some pizza money for the cats at the live show. Excellent. Well, pizza miles is on et.2k9.now. So we'll go out for some pizza and I will pay for it. Hell yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your generosity. Fifth with the Australian $2 tip says paint the town red super hot mode is so much fun. Uh, this is something I didn't even know about. I haven't had time to really play paint the town red except for like, you know, an hour before um, Wednesday show. And, uh, and it was a lot of fun, but I only played the roguelite mode. I didn't even know there was a super hot mode, right? Which is why there's no Brian bite or review <laughs> yet. Um, did you did you play any Paint the Town Red? Not yet. No, it's all good. Um, not. Yeah, I just I, I need to change the trailer, man. It's driving me up the wall. <laughs> um, here we go. This, this, this one we can let run for a little while. I don't have to worry about it now. Uh, and kind of and, and kind of the thing you were talking about about how understanding the community is. I get I, I get the the sort of um, imposter syndrome at the moment as well, which is. I was going into this year on such a high, like such good momentum with live streams and everything. And just like this year has just been, I feel like I'm in quicksand and wading through and or I'm just treading water and stuff. And everyone has been so understanding and like, yeah, when things are back up and running, good to go. It's fine. But I do just want to get back on with things. So um, I, I am very much looking forward to getting back to live streaming. So hopefully once I'm back from PAX East, uh it will be up and running again and hopefully i remember how to live stream let's plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like oh how do i do this again i feel uh, you man we, i feel like we you know we go into these things with the absolute best intentions we're like oh man i'm gonna like you know make sure there's live streams and there's this and the brian, brian bites and reviews and everything and it's just you know then shit hits the fan life hits the fan um you know we're both dealing with our fair share of depression these days too so um, we love, we love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. This, I can feel the tone of this show is completely different than, uh, uh, than, than normally. Uh, but I think you guys are here for it all. So we appreciate you. Professor Lilith with the $5 tip says, hi, GameCats. Hey, Lilith. Join us for playing Alvo in this week's Sunday multiplayer, 2 PM, March 17th, St. Patrick's day, cartoony shooting. Oh, is it St. Patty's day? I never know that. One of those holidays that sneaks up on me that I try to drive through a parade. It's like, oh shit. Um, um thank you, Professor Lilith. Um, as always. For all your hard work. Thundercat with the five quid says, dude, just be you, mate. Don't worry. You're good. And we'll all love you, crazy cats. Miles Pax will recharge you all, I'm sure. Yeah. And I'm, 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 fun, funny enough, like, if I was to be honest right now, don't be. I'm not I looking hate forward to, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I, I emotionally don't, I'm not looking forward to, to going out there just because I feel just such a downer at the moment. But I know as soon as I get out there and I see everyone and like I'm on the plane and it's like, a completely different shift i'm going to be having like the best time it's going to be good to see people it's gonna be a chance to meet people i've not met before in the industry perhaps um and just to sort of chill and switch off um because yeah literally the last two months has been me stuck at my laptop job hunting you know doing all all, all, all the sorts of stuff so it's gonna be nice having that sort of gear change as well so yeah. I, I really appreciate that 
Um, I'm in the, I uh, dude, I feel the exact same way. I'm glad you said it. Cause like, you know, it's not something you want to admit. You don't want to be like, Oh, I don't want to do this or I don't, you know, I don't want to go. And you know, I'm not, I'm not in that mindset yet. Um, and, uh, mostly because think about all the things that I have to do, you know, and, uh, you know, just, and, and, and how much time I spent in bed today, I was like, I mean, how do you, how do I change gears? And, and just suddenly like for four days straight, be like in a completely different mode. Um, so it'll be interesting for sure. Uh, but it we, might be just, exactly we, what I we, need. Yeah. And, and also, and, and this isn't just about being a creator. This also is for sort of game cats and people as consumers of content as well uh, and consumers of games. And I sort of touched upon it a, a couple of episodes ago where I said, I sat down to play Final Fantasy Rebirth. I played 20 minutes and I was like, I, I, I don't want to do this right now, which was a real shame because I was super hyped for it. And it's just the fact that we live in an age now where everything is non-stop there's always new games coming out in terms of making shows with broadcast television you do stuff in seasons and there'd be breaks you know whereas with youtube it's just every day it's constant yeah. uh, and so whether you're creating content or consuming it it's just uh, a fire hydrant of just you know more 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 uh, and there is always more that you can do and so it's always good to check in with yourselves and you know it's fine like if you're not feeling it when it comes to gaming and stuff, it's, it's fine to come back to it because, as we've spoken before, it's always about, you know, you do these things because you enjoy it. And so you should always give yourself the time to make sure you make the most of, of those opportunities. Miles, I don't know how we didn't talk about this on Wednesday's show, but I'm so glad we saved it for today because I needed something to lift me up, boost me out of this <laughs> funk that I'm in. Uh, and that's... Galaxy Cart Corner <laughs> with update 1.15. There's more Galaxy Cart. Dude, <laughs> right? I keep thinking like, you know, I, I keep thinking that the, the last update we get is the last update that we're going to get, right? Because they, they put so much work into this thing and they keep pumping out the updates. Um, but update 1.16 is now out. I believe it came out yesterday. Uh, three new maps. Three, three new maps. Uh, Big Top, Valhalla Valley, and Pirate's Treasure. And don't forget, you guys, like, I've, I've heard from some people saying, hey, I went into Galaxy Car. How do you unlock the new maps? They're divided up into worlds now. And so as you're flipping yeah. through, it looks like you're just flipping through, like, five different maps, five different tracks. But it's but you're flipping through five different worlds with multiple tracks in each world. Uh, so I know it can be confusing the first time, or if you're going back to it after a while, being like, I'm confused. Where Where, where is everything? That's how it works. Um, so... I mean, they just keep pumping out these maps. Major complaint that I had at launch. If you look at my review, it's like a three point five, dude. It's you. If you can, I, this is the type of game that I would give an eight out of ten to because it's so much fun, and you can like you can totally look past a little bit of jank because, and especially because it's our only kart racer. Uh, but they also gave us new game modes, which is uh, or a new game mode called Galaxy Tournament. Uh, the description is play for points through three consecutive tracks to win. This I love this man. Uh, people are talking about uh, they've started up a game cat racing league uh, for Gran Turismo. I want this to be included. Let's let's make sure that we do regular tournaments of Galaxy Car. Now that's got a tournament mode. Um, it's got six different Galaxy tournaments: Condor, Andromeda, Cygnus, Centauro, Sombrero, <laughs> which fits right in, and Redshift, uh, and then a couple of UI improvements as well. Um, it says better UI for during the end of the race. I guess after you finish the race and you're waiting for every, everyone else. Correct. Must be that. Yeah. And then brand new UI for tournament mode. Uh, and then a bunch of bug fixes, including reworked voice chat in multiplayer for better stability. Uh, the multiplayer definitely had some weirdness to it. Uh, you'd, you'd spawn inside of each other on the track. Uh, <laughs> certain people would just like not appear. Uh, and then the voice chat, yeah, some you just wouldn't hear some people talking. And so it sounds like they've been really paying attention to all the complaints. And Galaxy Cart should be much, much better now. I can't wait to check i mean out. Uh, I, i'm guessing the galaxy tournament yeah there you go play for points three three consecutive tracks to win i mean this is something i've i've wanted for a long time uh and funnily enough it's something i really want gran turismo 7 to have for their multiplayer um but th these guys just keep adding keep building on it and i think it's just amazing so um yeah this is fantastic Can't every jump time in. we jump in we just laugh constantly you know, and it's it's just so much fun. I, I enjoyed it when it was just had sense controller support, but now it's got the the wheel and sense support. Um, I'm hearing from people who have the Thrustmaster that the the resistance isn't great. It feels like it's a little 
has a little resistance, but not much. Uh, the generic feedback on um, on the G29, I think that was great, right? Because it just it just feels like kart racing, like real life kart racing. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Uh, I'm going to be re-reviewing this one probably in April when I have a little bit of time. And uh, but you can expect a really good score because man, they have just improved everything from from making it run at 90 native instead of 120 reprojected uh, to all of the you know all of the additions they've made. Tournament mode sounds great. Uh, there was just a serious lack of tracks at launch. Uh, it it seems so much better now. So I cannot uh, wait to get into this and just play the crap out of it for review. Have an excuse to play this for like six hours straight. You know. Awesome. Uh, Don Cat ninety four with the two chieftains says, "Behind which of Miles three doors are you today, Brian? Uh, which one's a closet? I I generally am in a closet at all times. It's a gay joke, Miles. Can you please let me out of the closet? But which one, Brian? Are, are they all closets? Do you not have an exit to this room?" <laughs> Oh no, no, I'm I'm here. This is me. This is mine. <laughs> no, <laughs> they no, the built they the, built the house around that's, you. That's oh. how I get out out that door. Dude, there's so many doors. I've never <laughs> seen a room with so many doors. And then there's it. four more four more here. <laughs> yeah. By, yeah. Right, and on the wall that's here. Yeah, there's, and then there's one here. Right. Um and then Trapped and then there's the a bench. hatch here <laughs> yep. and a hatch here. Yeah. And if I flip <laughs> the bed up There are seventeen <laughs> ways in and out of the room. But they're all just closets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It does it is funny. Somebody commented uh in the chat saying you guys look like you're in the same room because of all the white behind us. And it, it is funny. Right. Like we we're getting closer by the second. Um I thought the same thing when I was setting up the uh the formatting for the show. Ryan McCatfrey in the chat. That is the best username. Quick. It is. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it says love without it. lows there cannot be highs. Yeah. That is true. That's why there's so many evil people in the world, Miles. It's so, it's so that we can be so good. That, yeah, that's exactly why we have evil people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's going to be balanced. Yep. Uh, please tell me there's more stuff on the run of show. There is more stuff on the run of show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, dude, uh, let's let's go over to Insider Gaming. Uh, I, I think I, did I give you the website so we can... Yes, both look at it together. Here. Wonderful. This is the story that just keeps on uh, building. I mean, it's been speculated for a while, but um, d definitely, um, we're definitely getting somewhere now. Hell yeah! So the name of the article, uh, and it's from Tom Henderson. There, there are very few leakers out there. Very few people uh, that are actual insiders. There's a lot of people looking for clout. Uh, Tom Henderson does not seem to be one of those guys. He seems to anytime he says something, it's generally true, uh, and so. Uh, I love that this article was written by him. It says PS5 Pro specs leak are specs leak are real, releasing holiday 2024. Um, let me just look through this real quick. Uh, Insider Gaming can confirm that the leaked PS5 Pro specs uh, that leaked earlier today are real and still scheduled 2024 holiday. Uh, speaking with the source who wished to remain anonymous because they were not authorized to talk about the company's plans. We can confirm that the leaked documentation from the YouTube channel Moore's Law is Dead is real, despite the criticism of the leaker and the leaked specs. That is something that I saw a lot of people were like, oh, I don't trust Moore's Law. Like, he's never been right. But then Tom Henderson going to bat for it and saying, oh, no, 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 this is accurate. That changes everything. Um, the leaked documents confirm. Oh, hold on a second. There's more stuff. Um, in early 2023, I recorded reported to key to gaming that the ps5 pro is under the codename trinity and will be targeting improved and consistent frames per second at 4k resolution a new performance mode for 8k resolution and accelerated ray tracing damn in addition it was reported that trinity will have 30 wgp and one eight zero 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 mts Just give me lots of numbers and Memory. letters and yeah yep. wow i'm yep. blown away i'm so fucking blown away by numbers and letters uh i don't i you, you guys know this i i'll talk about games all day i am not your hardware guy i'm not going to be like i'm not gonna be able to tell you jack shit about how the ps5 compares to the ps5 pro um but let's let's just run through this real quick uh today's leak documents also confirmed rendering 45 percent faster than ps5 
uh, two to three times ray tracing, uh, times four in some cases, uh, 33.5 teraflops, uh, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling, which is upscaling anti-aliasing solution, support for resolutions. Fun. It is. Everything's exciting. Just, I, dude, I, I, you know, I... I, I just joked about it, but I do get excited about letters and numbers. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it says 45% faster than PS5. I, that's something I can, you know, digest. Um, let's see, support for no, resolution. The, the anti-aliasing solution and upscaling is a big deal. Like, I, I think it's great. And then going on to the next thing about the 8K. When the PS5 came out, it was it was saying that it supports 8K, which it technically does. But everyone's like, oh, wow, is this the age of 8K gaming? It's like, it's not. It, it, it really isn't. <laughs> and so uh, it's interesting uh, to see this. But a lot of incorporations, as we're seeing with AI and machine learning architecture. Um, so, yeah. Um, right. Just like the PS4 Pro was great for PSVR, the PS5 Pro is going to be excellent for PSVR too. Um, I, I do think VR... PlayStation VR gamers are going to be the greatest beneficiaries of these pro models. I think so too, right? Uh, because again, 8K is, I, we've, we've definitely heard people claiming, you know, when, when you start talking about like 8K uh, televisions, like the, uh, it's, it's, it's not this massive upgrade from the 4K uh, as, as a lot of people think that, you know, 720 was 1080p and, uh, and then 1080 to 4K. It's not this massive upgrade from 4K to 8K only because our eyes can only perceive so much. Uh, and so uh, unless you have like a, you know, 20 foot television, you may not see a huge difference. But the fact is that, you know, if, if things are going to be able to run in 8K, it just kind of gives you an idea of the power of this thing uh, to be able to run it on dude i'm still i'm still using a 1080p television for for some of my stuff uh i'm using you know a pretty cheap 4k tv for other stuff so uh, i won't be I, I, I could i could potentially die without ever owning an 8k tv um anyway the point is of all of this shit seems real and as you mentioned you know the psvr2 should benefit a lot from this uh which Pietrek f seems to agree with in the chat with the 10 plantain says looks like the pro could do 90 native without reprojection and i think that would be a dream come true uh miles I, and i and i don't and i don't mean that like because you know so many games can already run in 90 native on psvr2 but it would be amazing to see like village uh, amazing to see resident evil 4 remake amazing to see gran turismo and it would be awesome and I, and I can't wait to find out if you think this is something that they would do or not. It would be awesome to see Sony's commitment to PSVR 2 and the Pro by making sure all of those games are ready for the Pro launch and, and are able to run at one or either 120 native or 90 native um, and, and get rid of reprojection altogether on some of their marquee PSVR 2 titles. Do you think that's the kind of commitment they have to PS5 Pro and PSVR 2? I think so, but also in the context of what they're looking at, because it's this year they're looking at the PC compatibility. Uh, and so I think that will be a big consideration for them as well if we're getting access to PC VR libraries. Uh, they are going to want to look at all the opportunities to saying, you know, PSVR 2 is the, is the way to experience the, these things. Um, if, if it is going to be the fact that we can access PC VR games on the PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 5 Pro. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I don't know what it would mean for developers um, to, you know, have to do a do a, an update for the PS5 Pro. Um, but we just live in a really weird time, I think. I think it's been a very strange generation of console anyway, because every year it's just been new hardware, whether it's the PlayStation Portal, uh, now we've got the PlayStation um, 5 Pro being talked about. We've just had the PlayStation 5 Second Edition, you know, sort of the uh, the variation. And and maybe it is kind of what always happens every generation. It's just I think we're much more in touch with it. And and, and also it's it's felt like a much slower launch because of the pandemic, uh, because of all the issues we've seen with the gaming industry. Um it kind of feels like we haven't even got started with the PS5 generation in many ways, but um, also 
we we are moving into the the latter stage of its life cycle so um yeah. i like hearing yeah, that from I mean, somebody it, like you miles because you know for somebody like me who when i'm not in vr uh, i'm probably not playing gut sirens on my end i'm probably not playing god of war ragnarok i'm probably not playing the new horizon game i'm probably not playing ghost of tsushima right like you guys know this i'm, I'm bored of my triple a games like i'm bored of what, what what's been happening in the triple a flat screen space and i have been for a long time right and so uh, that's why when I'm not in VR, like I tend to go retro. I tend to, I got my Polymega last month after two and a half years of waiting. And like, it's my favorite thing ever. Uh, and so I, when I'm not playing VR games, I'm playing retro stuff. Uh, and so it's good to hear from people like you who are still playing big AAA games. You're excited for, you know, you were excited for the Final Fantasy game. You're, you're playing Helldivers too. And it's good, to, it's good to hear that you feel the same way that I do about this generation, that, uh, it's it seems like it's really just getting started just like right now <laughs> you know first party games were trickling out for the first couple years and, and and now it's time to find out what all these studios have been up to and uh and what psvr2 is really capable of yeah um i put a poll up by the way for anyone who has not been paying attention i am very very curious to see the results of this poll i said yeah, would you buy a playstation <laughs> 5 pro for psvr2 enhancements um my guess this is i think this also gets to something else which we've spoken about in the past which is for psvr2 to be successful for sony it doesn't require mass adoption because people that buy the psvr2 are putting a lot of money down and they're people that can be buying a lot of different vr experiences and i can imagine the sort of the dem that the portion of PS5 owners that are most likely to get a PS5 Pro are going to be the PSVR2 owners. I think that it's just people that own a PSVR2 are those that, you know, this might be a bit too judgmental, but have the disposable income or are willing to spend huge sums of disposable income on that kind of hardware. We talked about it before with Gran Turismo 7 and like, you know, racing rigs, if they have the space for it. Um, and so I, I, I think that's going to be the case with, um, with, uh, with, the, with the PS5 Pro. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to be getting it as soon, as soon as I can, because I remember what it was like. I say, I remember what it was like when I got it for PSVR, but now I'm like, actually, I don't know if I can remember. I'm pretty sure I was, did we, what was the first game that came out, had an update for PSVR, uh, PS4 Pro? That we saw a massive improvement on or was it not um i don't i don't know when the updates came out i don't know which which of them uh which of them required updates so i'm a little bit hazy on the whole thing i can tell you yeah. that the first two games i noticed massive improvements on was resident evil 7 because it got rid of the uh foveated rendering because right you ha always had to stare at the middle of the lenses right because everything else was pixelated and uh and so, but then it just got rid of that and like everything was rendered fairly well. Um, and so that was a massive improvement. Uh, and I remember Farpoint, the resolution definitely skyrocketed and which made everything pop even more, you know, those giant spiders on the first, uh, the first stage. I just remember being like, holy crap, like everything is way sharper than it used to, which means it's all way more terrifying than it used to be. Those are the two games I remember really taking advantage of it right out of the gate. Um, but it's been, it's, it, it's been a while. No idea. And, and and as Mad Vegan rightly said in the chat, um, and, and this is where I do remember it, was the load times. The load times was where we saw the massive improvement for uh, PSVR. Oh, was it really? Um, I, don't, I don't even remember that. Yeah, I think so. And I think Iron Man would be an example. It, it oh, wasn't as quick right. as we wanted it to be, but we do remember that mm -hmm. it did significantly um, help yeah. out. So I, um, I remember yeah. playing, I, I remember doing a comparison when PS5 came out and comparing it to the Pro. Um, and, and using Iron Man as one of the many games I compared with load times and resolution and all that and seeing like which games really took advantage of, uh, of, of the hardware and even on PlayStation five, Iron Man was just a slog for load times. It was terrible, terrible. Um, Hey, let's tackle a couple more tips. I don't want to get too far behind here. Fox die infected with the two euro says Friday. Hi guys. I love that he wrote Friday with an I. And then high with a Y, because I, I was like, "Oh man, man, missed opportunity, uh, missed opportunity." Fox die infected, but then he, but then he pulled it together with two Ys and high guys. Not bad, man. 
We also got Rondomar, the Spanish pirate game cut. Oh, the game cut uh, with the 10 quid. I'm confused. He's sorry. It's going to be like, why isn't it in like pesos or something? Which is fucking dumb, right? Everyone who's Spanish obviously lives in Mexico. That that that's how that sounds when I say it out loud. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't know you had Spanish people living in the UK miles. Oh God, this is why I just shouldn't do a show sometimes. We, should, we definitely <laughs> should have canceled today. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be so surprised when I show up in the UK and be like, oh wow, you guys have more than just British people here. It's crazy. Yeah, we we don't all wear top hats, <laughs> right? With monocles. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> on a pet do you know what a penny farthing is do you know what a penny farthing is did you have them in america you, it's like sometimes you just speak a different language miles it was the um it's the bicycle but the front wheel is absolutely gigantic yeah and I, then it has a tiny back wheel yeah oh yeah i mean what was that the 20s like i don't even know like when that was a thing i mean we still but yeah but you, sure. st- you still 20s. use that i mean i do I commute, well, yeah primary means of transportation yeah <laughs> And in all fairness, you guys, Miles is the reason I don't have any proper understanding of the UK because he said he, he feeds me shit like this all the time. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, just last week, he was like, we don't have any Spanish people here. And I was like, oh, well, that, this why this tip surprised me. Rondomar. So sorry for being a fucking moron. I apologize to you. Um, he says, great show as always, guys. Hope everyone has a great time at PAX. Uh, can you give a happy birthday shout out to my fiance? Have a great birthday, Sarah. Sarah. Have Sarah. a great birthday. Uh, and also, you're you're engaged to Rondomar. Life must be fucking good for Sarah, right? Rondomar is the what, dude. What a great birthday present. Yep. Shout out to Sarah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sarah. Is this what it's like being on Cameo Miles? Like, people are like, <laughs> Here, here's, here's some dollars. Can you please say this? Um, That's true. Yeah. Okay. Probably what it's like. I wouldn't okay. know. I'm going to get on Cameo. I'm going to get on Cameo and see. For, for the extra three dollars a month i don't there's no no one's gonna want me to say anything on cameo that that's for sure santa door the game tiger with the five dollar tip says have fun at pax uh we will have fun at pax we will make sure of it um Macho, 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 the real estate for crafts and game cap the two dollars says ps5 pro and psvr2 getting pc support are connected okay I do, I do think there is something at play there with the parity in terms of, you know, if it's going to cut, if PSVR 2 is going to be linking up with PC, they just want to make sure that they are constantly delivering. Um, because actually, I'm literally, I haven't fully made this thought yet, but I'm just going to start saying it and it might be the most idiotic thing ever. Oh, good. Spoken. Well, you need to be on but, the same page as me. So please start talking before you think. So when PSVR came out, it was like quite outdated for the machine it was released for. Whereas I kind of feel that PSVR two is ahead of the machine it was released for. It's yeah. Would we, would we agree with that? Yeah. I mean, I feel really good about it, man. Like, you know, we talked about how kind of future proof PSVR two is uh, to some degree. And I think this is part of it. I absolutely think this is part of it. So yeah. Yeah. It's hard, hard to disagree with that. Uh, I just ended the poll. Will you buy a PS5 Pro for PSVR 2 enhancements? 80% of you said yes. 19% of you said no. And 1% of you are missing. We should really form a search party for the 1% because where the fuck did the other 1% of the voters go? This is crazy. 80 point something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I mean, this is this is this is the PSVR two community right here, man. This is you guys are the hardest core of the hardcore uh, PSVR two users, and uh, and and eighty percent of you want it to be the best possible experience ever. I mean, and and of course, nineteen percent of you probably do as well, except you know, things get in the way, financial concerns, etc. Um, so, very cool. Um, <laughs> fits with the Australian five dollars in the chat is boosting something uh Dan said in the chat. He said Brian Cerebro in the chat is making games for sp- Cerebro in the chat says making games for split console PS5 Pro is annoying. Feel sorry for devs making two versions of one game. Uh well at least they're not making games for PCs. PCs are instead of set specs, you know, at least the PS5 is one set of specs and PS Pro and and also 
I guess, I guess, I guess Skydance is in a little bit of a different situation because uh, I no no one no one's buying PSVR one games anymore, and and, and if you are, I apologize. There, there's very few of you left, and so you can't justify any kind of business sense to develop PSVR one games anymore, right? Unless it's like some quick and dirty port. Um. So the so what 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 happens though is 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 what what seems to be happening is that we're moving on, right? So no, when you stop making PS four games and you're making PS five games. Right, because you're making PS4 games and PS4 Pro games, so you have to develop for two different set of specs, and then that moves on. Boom, you know now now are you making it for PS5 and PS5 Pro? That's that's two separate set of specs, right? Instead of doing it for PS4 and PS5, when when PS4 and PS5 would have been four, uh, well, I guess three set of specs up until this point, because you have to make it for PS4, PS4 Pro, and then PS5, and so it, it's got it. It's still got to be easier. Than developing for PC with a wide range of specs uh, and hoping that it works on everybody's setup. Uh, but I do understand console gaming is supposed to be uh, easier than this. Uh, I don't know. I, did he follow it up? He followed it up and said, PC is actually easier. You just put, you just ignore the problem. If the PC user's hardware, whoops, things scrolled. If the PC user's hardware can't run the game, you give them a. <laughs> I like it. I like it. At least you don't have to fucking. Uh, if you don't have to deal with Sony, I guess it's things are a lot easier, right? So passing Sony's certification in QA uh, changes everything. Um, EE transmit with the two and a half quid says, "Friends, friends, how how do you share super chat revenue? We don't. I barely make enough money to survive, um, and so the hope is, of course." Uh, that you know, Miles gets introduced to more people every week. That AJ gets introduced to more people, and Wesson gets introduced to more people every week. Um, and uh, the money that comes in pays the bills. Uh, it is YouTube takes their cut. Uh, I get completely raped with taxes by at the end of the year. Um, so uh, I made more money waiting tables. If you guys weren't aware, I used to work three, four days a week and make way more money than I do on YouTube. So it, it's not, it's not a profitable job. I don't think it's going to be super profitable until we get into like, I don't know, it have to be like three times, uh, the number of viewership, three times the number of subscribers, three times the viewership. Uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I could, I should probably start taking some of these sponsorships and, uh, and, and getting some extra revenue because shit money's been really tight for years now. So, uh, that's how we do it. You can do, yeah. And and, it, and 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 there's you know is and sponsorship isn't a blanket statement. There are the right sponsorships for the channel and not. Uh, and just from my end on stuff, this is something I've always been clear about. Is the reason I get involved with Gamescast Live is because I love to and I like to support uh, the channel. I don't do this. I don't ever intend of doing this for money. And I do get a lot of support from the GameCat community on my own channel, which I'm really really grateful for. Um, but I'm here because I, I this channel has done a lot for me. I want it to succeed. So. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, and I and I really hope that at, at any point, you know, AJ's Miles or West feels as though, like, you know, that they're not benefiting from the channel anymore. That it's time consuming. Um, you know, I I do my best to make sure that they just have to show up for the time that they're here and don't have to do any work ahead of time. You know, I put together the run of show and, and make sure that I'm running the show while it's happening. Um, so hope if you ever feel that if if any of these guys ever feel like it's not worth their, you know, ninety minutes, two hours a week, um, to participate in the show. Then I really hope that they will be honest with me and say, "Hey, you know, I got to go uh, focus on my own channel for those for that time." Um, and I would never, I, I would never ever blame them for that, right? Because I'm I'm thrilled that you guys donate your time and, and you're and you're part of my channel. I appreciate it. So, and, oh, appreciate and hopefully it. one day we're all one big fucking conglomerate and we're like, "Hey, under the without parole brands, like we're all getting paid and shit." It'd on the be side great. of a building, I yeah. love it, I love it. Um. Okay, is that? We're almost there. We're getting there. Uh, we got a couple new release dates here. We're going to start with Big Shots, which is coming next month. Uh, Miles, is Big Shots a game you're familiar with? It is not, Brian. So I do. Actually, no, maybe I, I do know. Go on, tell me about it. All right, well, I'm going to bring up the trailer first because this is the. I, I don't even know if this is the correct trailer or not. This is a new one. Is it a roguelite? It. <laughs> 
<laughs> let me uh, i'm gonna bring it up on steam because as we know steam's got the steam's got the this is the mech game store. isn't it it is a mech game for sure here give me a second here big shots there it is nice and easy to find on the seam store and let's while we're at it let's bring it up so you guys can also witness it full screen and all right that's looking good now we can bring up the steam page for you guys to see cool uh so let's see what we got here uh, d my dearest uh, became the publisher of this game only recently, it seems. Uh, prior to prior to that, I mean, just being developed by Alter Eyes, not not a studio I'm familiar with. Uh, but it says, "Gear up, team up, and exterminate. Become the ultimate mech pilot in big shots." Uh, the action-packed VR roguelite oh, you nailed it where you'll battle alien hordes, earn upgrades, and forge an unstoppable mech to reclaim Earth. Um, oh, this. Which I don't even know what the right trailer is. I think I think I'm playing the old trailer, um, but this guy, this just got a release date for next month, Miles, April 18th, uh, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. We don't really have any great mech games. Uh, we haven't had any for a while, um, and it does look like it's you know fast paced and, and enough action. And dude, if if they if they get this thing up and running well on the PSVR two, I think that this kind of cell shaded like style can yeah. really, really pop in VR. Uh, so we might be in for something special here. Um, is it something that interests you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I, I know some people are, f are dealing with roguelike fatigue. I love the mechanic. Um, roguelites can feel very different, you know, depending on what the game mechanics are themselves um it's just a way of prolonging things you know um so uh yeah i'm all for this I, I do like the art style um and i think if it feels good i mean the the reviews of it when it was on quest were decent um it, you know the website says um one of these creators gamer muscle uh says fantastic player movement super comfortable really immersive cockpit i mean those are three things that you would hope you'd get from a game like this because for me i just think of is it rigs yeah that came uh and i remember feeling quite queasy playing that game for a bit on uh, psvr um my uh yeah my so. my issue with rigs was that i just didn't like the sport they had created and right and so if it was just more like hey you know uh team death matches that kind of stuff um I, w I probably would have been on board with rigs if it was something a little bit more uh, simple or something I, I could wrap my head around a little bit better. Um, I do want to point out that over on the Steam page, they have some more information. It's a solo or cross-platform co-op, uh, and that does include, so we're talking about uh, a PC Quest and PlayStation VR. It says exterminations can be done solo or side-by-side -side with a fellow big shot when teamed up. Working together is key to holding off alien scum and getting the job done. Cross-platform play is supported, so none of your friends will be left out. It says, build your ultimate mech. Evolve your humble mech with upgrades during runs. Become the ultimate alien exterminator in a crazy roguelite adventure. Explore the possibilities in combinations from the upgrades presented to you, or change your loadout with the permanent upgrades that you can acquire in the shop back at the hangar. Um, talks about mobility, um, and that's about it. Uh, I think, you know... If you got roguelite fatigue, totally understandable. Uh, I, you know, I was I was just talking about how great, how much fun I had with Paint the Town Red's roguelite mode, uh, but at the same time, I was like, you know, this isn't, it's not doing enough to change people's minds to say, hey, if you're tired of this genre, this isn't going to be the one that changes your mind. I do think the inclusion of multiplayer is enough to change some people's minds and say, hey, you know, Agreed. I, I want to get in there and play with my friends. Oh, okay. Just it's still a roguelike, but I get to play with my friends, and it's you know, and it's high action mech combat. I think this could, this could, this could be a game that would change people's minds a little bit. I'm super hyped for this. <laughs> DJ Disco Beaver says the R in PSVR stands for roguelite. <laughs> I like it. Um, the yeah. S S stands for scary, because you know, <laughs> too much horror in VR. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, that's the whining I never get sick of. Uh, so Big Shots is coming next month, which is pretty cool. Uh, April is already starting to get its own. Uh, it's already starting to get its own uh, peppering of PSVR 2 releases. But that's not all, AJ. No, you're not AJ. Do you have a beanie? Miles. It, w it, would, be e it would be easier for me to just pretend that you're AJ than... Remember Funnily your... enough, when I used to do, when for the first like five years I was a YouTuber, I had a black beanie I always wore, uh, and I obviously don't have it here. But I have to dig it out sometime. God, you look so Solidarity. different, dude. The uh, those original <laughs> those original YouTube videos that you did from like a decade ago, you look like a completely different person. Dude, I guess we all look like a completely different person. Almost two decades ago. Is it two? Almost two decades. It's like 17, 18 years ago now. Wait, so first YouTube video. Holy shit! Like half your dude, life ago. It's crazy. Like almost half my life. It's been doing YouTube content. It's crazy. Amazing. Amazing. Um, hold on. What do we got here? Let's tackle some tips because you guys keep the uh, the engine running here. Awesome Tatum with the $5 tip says gargantuan hug. Is that a Swords of Gargantuan hug? Anybody want to hook up their PSVR ones? Put them down. Thank you, Tatum. Old Darth with Canadian $5 tip says, Brian, cheap travel trip. Take some siren, take some siren recordings to packs in case you get homesick, and use them for alert. Use them as an alert for game cats assemble. Uh, I like it. I, th I think we'll get in trouble <laughs> just for having sirens in packs east. Yeah, that's probably an issue. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's amazing though. I yeah, when I went to Beyond Three Hundred, um, the the thing that they did was like. Because obviously, after the event, after the after the live show that they did, that we all showed up for, um, you know, it was just like it was a lot of events happening around in town and everything, and like you know, they did a live episode of Game Scoop from from this bar downtown, and um, you know, we we actually we were in bars a lot, uh, but but it was a lot of uh, a lot of podcast beyond fans all drinking together for a couple of days straight. And uh, and you just be drinking, and you hear somebody in the background go beyond, and then everybody in unison would just yell beyond. And so, uh, so if you hear somebody meow really loudly at PAX, it is your duty as a as a game cat to meow back as loud as you possibly can, and we'll just confuse the fuck out of everyone and run on over on all four legs. <laughs> that might be too much, but. Yeah, <laughs> I say do it. Um, time to play VR with the two quid says Stilt is my new favorite game except for the green. Did I read this wrong? Stilt is my new favorite game except for the green. The green? Either green hell. Nah, it doesn't mean that. Is there know. something green in the game that causes issues? <sighs> my brain is fried. Um, I don't know. Time to play VR. I feel like it's been doing a lot of riddles today. <laughs> I mean, it makes it makes the show fun. Nothing like having to <laughs> translate and interpret each of the tips. Uh, but he's. But I'll take the first half first. Uh, Miles, <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna call you a different name uh, as a, as if you were some Do game it. show host. Whatever. Um, what what are names anyway? But then I realized that I just tried to call you AJ, and like no one would have gotten the joke. They'd be like, Brian's really losing his shit today. Uh, but yeah, still still being your new favorite game, except for anything is great because uh still still it's a lot of fucking fun man still it's a lot of fun the multiplayer is a blast um the you don't need to do that the yeah. single player stuff you know what dude somebody somebody wrote to me on discord and i apologize again i'm, I'm i've not been good at personal messages but green somebody, blinders that's what they were talking about the green blinders oh yes and that is when getting goes, patched when out the, like the screen goes completely green when you yep and that is getting patched out this week, thankfully. So, uh, dude, so somebody somebody left me a message on Discord saying, "Hey, um, my review is linked in the official PlayStation Five store, uh, like on your console. You know how they actually have videos on the console where they don't on the PC. Um, they said they said my my review was linked uh, on the PlayStation Store itself. Uh, so I was like, fucking crazy. I'm gonna have to check that shit out, um, dude. Why don't they do more of that? Like Sony, they they always include like the trailer. They should include, and they can curate it themselves. Like it's it's not it has to be automated. Like if they find a good review or a let's play, they should include it on the store. Like uh, yeah. But then, dude, what you were talking about with AJ on Wednesday, I was completely on. Oh, sorry, on Monday, I was completely on board with uh, regarding. Um, 
just what a disgrace the PlayStation Store is. You know, people on day one, that's when they make the most sales. And when you mentioned how you will type in the full name and the game won't come up, I was like, yeah, I've done that as well, and I can't believe it. You type in the full name of a game, and it doesn't even give you that game, even though you're typing it exactly. It's um, it's it's appalling. Yeah. Uh, boy, we'll spe- speaking of text messages and messages I haven't responded to, you sent me that on Monday, and I don't think I looked today when I sent you a text, and I was like, oh, I never even responded to him. You you had messaged me and saying, Sorry. hey, I totally agreed with your rant about the PlayStation Store, and I was just like, and I nodded. I was like, I don't, but nodding is not a proper response to a text message because well, only I saw the nodding and Tornado was like, yeah. why are you nodding? And that's as far as that communication went. So, yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, <laughs> High phase with the can- uh, Canadian $20 tip says, Big Shots looks really cool. Titanfall would have been the ultimate dream uh, ultimate dream game for, for VR for me. It screams VRAF. I never played Titanfall. Uh, but Titanfall did look like a lot of fun, especially Titanfall. Is it 2. Titan? Is it? I think it's Titanfall Two is the one that everyone says is absolutely fantastic. Because yes. I know when Apex, uh, con, uh, not Apex Construct, Apex Legends came out, everyone was saying, "Oh yeah, it was based on the Titan Titanfall." And everyone talks about. I think like the final battle in Titanfall Two is like iconic in gaming, and I've always managed to stay away from it um, to not spoil it. I should probably dive in and experience it. Um, but yeah. Um, thanks for the support, Hi Phase, uh, and everybody, of course. Um, and the list of games that we could just create right now being like, I wish this was in VR. Endless. Endless. Um, the game cat Andrew Ehrenreich with the $5 tip says, Late to the stream, super busy making pizzas. Shocked you hated Twilight Zone. It's definitely rough, but I really liked it. Don't worry. Still love you guys. Yeah, I want to be clear. Is that I think, I think you and I probably agree agree to an extent andrew um there are there are things that are very cool in the game like but but those concepts are not well fleshed out and so i think you and i probably enjoyed the same part of the game uh but i guess i don't know man you tell me you tell me what you liked about chapter two because chapter two was terrible (laughs) like terrible chapter three had a cool moment or two in chapter one overall was a very cool concept but man yeah i mean it didn't it obviously didn't help that i was dealing with uh massive frame rate issues and stuttering constantly uh not sure brando with the level three membership yeah don't forget you guys you can leave uh if if you're a member over here you can you get a free uh super chat every month uh not sure brando says uh actually brian suffering for the sins of the developers makes him the vr jesus oh boy oh boy (laughs) I just just want to be just want to go on the record and say not sure Brando said that I did not <laughs> VR Jesus right Can have some John Lennon drama over here in a second <laughs> all right Miles uh, let's talk about uh, wait Fox die infected with the two euros says another one to pay the taxes for the other one <laughs> for the other one <laughs> amazing it's crazy, you guys. It is crazy. Uh, the U.S. government hates when you own a small business, uh, and uh, when it's as small as this is, there's there's no way to hide shit. <laughs> it's just like, oh, here's your here's your form from Google. Here's your form from Patreon, and you get raked over the coals. Um, so <laughs> maybe when this is a million dollar a year business, I'll be able to hire lawyers to, uh, you know, hide my income. <laughs> The less you make, the more you pay. Uh, but thankfully, you guys, and this is and this is why you guys hear sirens all the times because this is I live cheap. I really do. I live. I don't live in the best place. My vehicle is uh, older than miles, uh, and so I don't. Uh, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't have a car payment every month. My my mortgage is paid off for the last like five years ago, um, and so if it wasn't for that, I would still be working at the restaurant constantly. Um, so these are sacrifices you make. You know, it's like this is what I want to do. These are the sacrifices I made. And so, you know, that's that's on me. That's not on anyone else. Uh, but, you know, I feel very fortunate that I get I get to do this. And, but that but that's why you hear the sirens. That's why, um, you know, everything seems like it's broken all the time because it kind of is. <laughs> uh, and fifth with the Australian $2 tip says, any cube info? Yeah, it comes out tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> that's the embargo is also and tomorrow. Been, and, so, And we've, yeah, and we've been playing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that is all the info uh, I think we've got for you. I think it's I think it's officially thirty dollars. 
Um, and my, and my review will be late because, because of life. Uh, okay, Miles, one more game got a release date, and this one Genotype. I am excited for uh, because, of, was it a month ago or so? Uh, Wes, hold on a second, Gino, how do you type? There it is. Here's some footage of me playing it. Uh, a, a month ago, Wes and I played some Quest 3 games. We played Genotype. We played the, the Titanic uh, game and something else. Oh, the Overdark demo. We played that on Steam. And uh, and because because all those games are coming to PSVR two, and we want to do a little preview show. Uh, and I've been curious about Genotype for a while. Uh, and so, uh, dude, it's so crazy that VR has been around for a while, and we just there seems to be certain genres that we're just lacking in. And I don't think Genotype goes above and beyond to do anything spectacular but what it's doing is really solid and it delivers in a, on a genre like this single player shooter adventure good progression system that we just don't see very often especially in the in the indie space and so this i i fortunately i i don't even remember how much i played maybe the first hour first two hours i forget what it was uh and i was I didn't want to stop. I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to keep exploring. I wanted to keep progressing. I wanted to keep upgrading my my, my skills. Uh, this game, I I mean, it, it was good on Quest Three, right? And, and if we even get like a, a, a solid Quest Three port, I'll be happy. Uh, it, but if they're going to be taking advantage of you know, uh, you know a few of the PSVR two special features, then this could be this could be really special. Um, so. Uh, have you been keeping your eye on this one, Miles, or is this one kind of out of left field for you? It's been out of field for me, but like from seeing the trailer and stuff, uh, I mean, I, I was wondering if it was horror at first, but it looks like it's just a fun action adventure with some creepy enemies. Um, the swimming mechanics look cool, and uh, I mean, it's obviously going to be polished for a trailer, but it looks really good, um, and it looks like it's got some really interesting mechanics. Uh, with the way that you can adjust the the, the tools that you're using, um, so yeah, um, if it gets a good port, looks like it could be a, a solid another solid entry for the for the library. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely got some. Uh, I, I'm not going to say. Um, I think I think Wes was referring to it as the closest we've gotten to Dead Space in in VR. Um, I don't oh. think I don't think he means that from a horror level. I think he just means from a gameplay okay. perspective. It, it's got a horror vibe going on, right? Everything is you know, abandoned and desolate. But so far I haven't seen anything like really scary. Uh, but you do progress through and you, and you know, you've got upgrades and it's again, very desolate space station type atmosphere. Uh, so I, I can see the comparisons. Um, and one of the things I really, really enjoyed was that, you know, you're, you're never forced to sit there and stand and watch somebody talk at you. Right. You find audio logs, you start playing them and you just, you know, keep playing the game as they're playing. Uh, this game is all about gameplay, uh, and the narrative is there, but it's not punching you in the face. It's like, it's just kind of there for people who really want to take it all in. And, um, uh, really, uh, really enjoyed what I played so far. I saw somebody in the chat say, uh, Marsh robot says, uh, he said it was a good game, not great. Um, definitely worth playing. And I agree with you. Uh, so I like good games. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, he's saying, and I, and he, he's I, saying I, a seven I, I say out of ten. Yes, but I'm also being quite serious, which is like they don't always have to be great. You can play good games and have a really good time with them. So, yeah, um, yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, he's saying seven out of ten. And like, and honestly, if it's a straight quest three port, I'll be like, yeah, I, I think I'm going to be with you. Uh, but if it, if they do any kind of like real uh, immersion increasing upgrades, uh, one of the things because uh, you're using this grapple type thing that comes out of your uh, glove. Uh, it's, it's obviously more complicated than that. It's like, I'll buy it, whatever, like different, <laughs> different things that you, uh, I don't going to get into it. <laughs> it's pointless. If you want to, if you want to hear me and Wes talk about genotype for way too long, then there's an episode that you can search for and find. Um, but one of the things that was really lacking in the quest three version we saw were really good haptics. You were doing things like ripping things off walls 
and like it didn't really feel like it. It felt kind of like bare and empty. And if they can really utilize the, the adaptive triggers and the haptics from the sense controllers, they could make this all feel way more immersive. And that's when the score starts, I think, bumping up a little bit. Uh, so uh, we will see if they if they put the time and effort into making that happen. Um, oh, and good, good, good. GameCat Andrew Ehrenreich responded to my Twilight Zone comment about Chapter 2. Uh, he says, uh, Chapter 2 was... They shouldn't have told the story at the start and let us figure it out from the newspapers, but the whole story was great, especially as someone who grew up loving Twilight Zone. Um, okay. All right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I, I, I got real excited when I, when I saw some uh, little callbacks to the original Twilight Zone episodes. There's like collectibles you can find that are like, oh shit, I remember this episode. This is cool. It's so cool they included this. You know, but... Not too, not too many of those moments. Uh, time to play VR with the two quid says, I can only afford 50 letters at a time. Money is a... What do you think the, missi- what do you think the missing word is, Miles? There's only one way to find out. Nice. I love it. I love how, I love how everything is a... <laughs> everything is a mystery. Miles... What was the release date for this? Dude, March 23rd for Genotype. It's well we're away. Yep. It's almost like they planned it that way. Don't trust anybody. I was, so glad, I was so glad that Madison got delayed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, this is this is crazy. This is crazy. Dude, I, I got a message from somebody uh, on the YouTube channel saying, <clears throat> man, if you want to up your subscribers, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want, if you want people to watch your channel more and blah, 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 you need, to, you need to cover PC gaming and quest gaming. Uh, you need to cover all these other platforms. And I was like, that's, that's a nice sentiment to be like, Hey, I want to watch your channel more and have you cover more games. And like, I'm concerned about your growth. It's a nice sentiment, but dude, we are not starved for games over here. Like we have, I have too many games to cover. I'm not going to be able to get reviews out in a timely manner. Uh, we've got just they're just pouring in, and it, you know some of them seem like they're going to be great. So, like, you know, I, I again I appreciate the sentiment, but the fact is, is that like it's one of me, and I am trying to do a lot. Uh, and so, yeah, this is if 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 PSVR two dies out, if if this ends up being a massive failure. I'm I'm going down with the ship again, just like I went down with the PSVR one ship, uh, and that's and that's how it's going to be. Um, so, uh, if 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 that's if that's your feeling on the matter that you think I need to cover everything, then I appreciate it. But I've I've already heard it numerous times, uh, so no need to no need to bring it up. Sirens on my end. Uh, <laughs> Shanna Saquon says I'm only here for the PC, PC VR coverage. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, it's coming. Indeed. All right. Miles, are you Brian. ready to play a little 20 questions? I am, Brian. Uh, are you choosing? I am. Okay. Yep. Uh, I think I think Wes got me with um, Just in Time Incorporated on Wednesday. Yeah. Ooh. That, Ooh. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, you know why it's a tough one? Because because Des reviewed that, and that, which means I never even beat it. I don't think I ever beat it. Ah. Uh. Yep. All right, guys, help them out in the chat. You know how this works. Uh, it's it's really difficult to uh, to to play this game to be on the receiving end. Uh, that sounded not how I meant it. Um. So help them out. Uh, suggest good games that might be that might be. <laughs> and suggest good questions that he might ask. Uh, I'm thinking of a PSVR 1 or PSVR 2 game. Let's do this shit. 20 yes or no questions, 6 minutes, putting a clock up on the counter, on your mark, get Des. This is how I'm doing hands-free. Go. Does it have multiplayer, Brian? Uh, no. Mm, not, a, no, no multiplayer. Not, not in any traditional sense, no. Okay. Um... Is it a PSVR 2 game? Yep. Is it on PSVR? It's not. See, this isn't Monday. I I only torture AJ because I torture those I love. I don't love you, Miles. 
Great, that's good. That's good to know. Um, have Have they gone for a realistic aesthetic? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Is it horror? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, is it a popular IP? Um. It is a known IP. Known IP. I'll tell you known IP. Um, did it come out in 2023? Yes. And was it a launch title? No. Not a launch title. Um, okay. Um, has this developer made other PSVR 2 games? No. Okay, so it's not propagation. Uh, um, and it wasn't on PSVR, so it's not um, affected the manner. Um, is there full locomotion? No, that's 10. Okay. Um... Is it a rail shooter? Yes. Is it switchback, Brian? It is switchback uh, by Supermassive Games. Uh, it was supposed to be a launch title. It came out a little bit later than expected. Uh, it came out in uh, March 16th, so less than a month after launch, 2023. Uh, Miles, I know this was like a super easy, slow ball over the plate, nice and easy pitch. Uh, sirens on my end but the reason i had to bring it up is because i forgot to mention on the show so i had to kind of like use this as a extra news story (laughs) there's a price drop for switchback is down from 40 dollars to 30 dollars and if you guys have been paying attention to all the updates the, the the visual updates that it received the gameplay updates it received the horde mode update it received uh, then you'll know uh, the loading time update, all that stuff. You know, it, it's definitely a much more of a complete game, a much more of a uh, of of the game it should have been at launch. Um, and the price, I feel like, also reflects a price that it should have been at launch. I, Rush of Blood was twenty dollars and felt like it was underpriced. This was forty dollars, felt like it was overpriced. Permanent price drop to thirty dollars. Uh, I definitely had a good enough time with this to recommend it. I think it's awesome. It looks so good now. It looks so good after they did that update. Yeah. Um, very well polished. Um, Brian, before we wrap things up, did you see PlayStation's new multiplayer trailer they released? I did. Um, what did you I think li- of it? I liked it. Yeah? I, I loved it. Um, is that because yeah. is that because you work for Rapid Eye Movers now and no. you have to like it? <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, <laughs> I, that was really mean. Obvi- no, 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 no. It's fair. It's fair. Um, for me, it's because it's it's an advert that does more than just this is VR, this is why it's good. It's this is what it is to play with friends. Mm-hmm. And what I want them to do more marketing of is contextual marketing. This is for these type of gamers. Like they should do a trailer for like if you're into shooters, if you're into horror. Do you know what I mean? To sort of really ignite those feelings. And I think this is a great trailer that really ignites what it's like to play with other people in VR because people often will think of VR as quite an isolating experience, but actually playing multiplayer, there's a lot of, um, you know, Vertigo games did well there because uh, they had the uh, um, Arizona Sunshine 2, then it went into After the Fall, um, almost seamlessly, actually, in the yeah. edit. Um, it has, obviously, Beat Saber in there. Yes, it does have C, C- Smash VRS. Um and I, I just, I, I just, I think it's a solid advert, and I'd like the energy of like this is what it is to play multiplayer in VR. And I hope that PlayStation does more ads where it's kind of like curating the VR experience based on the types of people that will, you know, there are different types of gamers. We know that, but that's also the case for VR. And I think for VR, you have to lean into those specific wants more because buying PSVR two is a bigger ask. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad <clears throat> they they featured No Man's Sky so heavily in this. Uh, I I don't think you know as, as somebody who doesn't really you know 
get the uh, the hook with No Man's Sky. Uh, and again, it is something that I kind of promised myself I was going to do this year and like make sure I take a whole weekend off or something and play a lot of No Man's Sky and like you know find the love that everyone else has for it. Uh, it is undeniably a massive game with massive appeal. And we have the best looking version of it on PSVR 2. The most immersive version, the best looking version. It's it, 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 it's one of those games that uh, you could buy a PSVR 2 for No Man's Sky alone. And then hundreds of hours later go, yeah, that was worth it. Right? Same with Gran Turismo. I think same for the Resident Evil games. You know, the, these purchases, the purchase is worth it for these games alone. Uh, and then we're just like just spoiled for choice after that. Like there's so much good stuff going on. Uh, lots of great games. Uh, so. Um, yeah, showing No Man's Sky, they had Demio in there. They had Crossfire Sierra Squad. That's, you know, one of these games that people always say, like, why aren't they talking about that? Yeah. You know, No Man's Sky doesn't get brought up in a lot of uh, content. Obviously, they have Gran Turismo 7, uh, Creed, uh, Arizona Sunshine 2, After the Fall. I'm just uh, even Ghostbusters, Rise of the Ghost Lord and Among Us VR. Like, right. that's a good mix, man. I feel like, like they have to mix contractually include Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's like... So yeah, it gets yeah. a Sony and, property, and it comes, shove it in there. Yeah, and when it and when it comes to Ghostbusters, with all the problems I've got with it, I I'm 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 actually it's a game. Do, do you know what it is? I have an issue when they include certain games when it's at the expense of. But why didn't they include that? Do, right. do you know what I mean? Kind right. of like when they show the four games and one of them is um, Project Wingman, and you're like, what? Yep. Um, whereas in this, when it's again showing multiplayer. Ghostbusters, and again, I think Ghostbusters is a game that a lot of young VR players are enjoying, um, and uh, I, I think it's it's good to include that in there. So, um, yeah, um, I put the, the commercial in the uh, in the chat, and actually, nice. one of the top comments someone said uh, for, for that was probably the best marketing they've done for the VR headset. All the headsets are on. And they didn't have to pay a celebrity a few million to pretend <laughs> to play it. Keep it up, Sony. Nice. But I love that so much. Yeah. But it's true. Just we we just want to just celebrate the games and the experiences and and make it contextual. So yeah, yeah. yeah this this trailer you said it makes you want to get into Demio, dude. It makes me want to like slide my racing rig back closer to my PlayStation Five so I can plug it in again and play some Gran Turismo because that is some good ass footage they were showing of that. So yeah, yep. yeah. It's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. Uh, Zeke in the chat was asking what happened to uh, Zenith, The Last City. I, I just got a press release from them about them going free to play. I know that people were complaining it wasn't on the store like it was supposed to be. It came off the store. It's getting back on the store. If it's not on there currently, then I'm sure it will be soon. Uh, there is a complete, it's gone free to play. And you can still buy Zenith, The Last City, the stuff that we played up until this point um, as, as paid DLC, but it's not necessary. Uh, to play the free-to-play mode. Um, so that's what's happening with Zenith. Miles, we were like, let's make this short and short and sweet because neither one of us were fairly up to it. So I want to thank you, Miles, for um, for being here for me uh, and, uh, and, of course, everybody in the chat being here for both of us because I will tell you, I feel infinitely better now than I did an hour and a half ago. Um, I still definitely want to go back to bed and I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to say it's the coffee along with the cat support um it's but but we want to thank all you guys for being here it was really really great of you i'm uh, definitely going to take a screenshot of this because something i've done today on my instagram was uh, on my story post today i started the day and it was me in bed going i have one objective today and it's to kick depression's ass and all i've done today is show photos of like everything i've done to try and shake off these blues uh, things like you know going for walks or doing a bit of exercise in vr i did a flotation tank all that sort of stuff and this is going to be a great way to top off the day because hanging out with game cats uh always awesome always lifts my spirit so thank you everyone for, for sure. tuning in for sure yeah and if anyone out there you know like deals with depression like please like just know you're not alone it can feel so lonely sometimes it can feel so overbearing overwhelming uh, and it seems like there's no way out but you know it's i think these last few years have been a been the great equalizer and put a lot of people who were very used to getting out and used to seeing their friends and doing stuff you know it's 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 changed a lot of people it's changed the way a lot of people live and um you know and, and i think a lot of more people are struggling now than ever so just remember that you know that if you, if you ever need someone to talk to like our community is amazing 
uh, and I'm not trying to promote the Discord. I don't make any money off of Discord, <laughs> so it's like I try to promote it. But I'm like I try to promote it for to be a place that where people can hang out and shoot the shit, and it doesn't have to be about PSVR too. It can just be like, hey, can we want to jump in voice chat and and just shoot the shit for a little while? And it's just it's a great community, man. So please take advantage of it, uh, especially if you, you know, if you're suffering in any way. All right, man. Um, let's get out of here. Uh, thank you to everybody who supports the channel financially. Uh, you, you know, you could do in fucking God's work out there. I swear there's going to be Patreon uh, content at some point. Like I said, I was just testing out the mic last night, doing some Twilight Zone. Um, and, uh, and and there will definitely be some uh, Let's Plays up on Patreon over the next... It's, it, if I can get one up there before PAX East and then start getting them up again pa after PAX East, that'll be great. Um but, uh, but, but if not, please understand, I'm doing my absolute best. Uh, thanks to everybody who's a member over here. Thanks to everybody uh, who tips during the show. It means so much. We appreciate it. Uh, dude, all the people behind the scenes, all of my moderators helping to keep uh, YouTube up and running, to keep the Discord up and running, uh, Rypop for putting this up on podcast services. I, can't, I always, I always want to say Sci-Fi Game Cat Henry, uh, but, it, but the... Timestamps have now been taken over by Brody, the GameCat Army General. Guys, we fucking love you guys. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who watch the show, sit back, and they'll say a goddamn word. Numbers don't lie. We know you're out there, and we love you just as much. Happy Friday, Miles. Happy Friday, Brian. And next Friday, who knows what's going to happen, because we're going to be at PAX East. Let's do it. Man, what a terrible, terrible thumbnail. This is awful. It's like Big Shots and Genotype get new release dates as if they had old release dates. Now they've got new, more accurate ones. It's, uh, this, this is what happens when you just... I literally, literally did not decide to do this show until about 20 minutes before we went live. So my apologies for that. Um, Miles, before we, before we do Clip of the Week, um, I, I, I saw old Darth in the chat asking if this would be the last episode of Gamescast before PAX. And as you know, I have no idea <laughs> like how anything's working. We don't, we don't, I'm not good at planning stuff out. I take every day, day by day. What can I do today? What can I do tomorrow? What can I do the day after? But I only take it day by day by day. Um, and so I don't really think too far ahead because I can't, I just, I just don't have the brain capacity for it. So uh, it's an interesting question. I do think we will, you'll see a show Monday. The big question is going to be Wednesday. I don't know if Wes will be already traveling by that point uh, or if he'll be too I'll busy. Be in, I'll getting be in ready. Boston. You'll already be in Boston. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm doing my Miles Die live show because it normally happens well, basically when I land because of the time difference now. Yeah. So I don't know. I could always come over and do do the show with you over there. Uh, I mean, dude, I'm not, I'm, if, if you if you want to if you want to come over Wednesday and just scooch scooch up next to me, we can, we can totally do uh, a show with with Wes on Wednesday. <laughs> Let's oh, do that, oh, dude. I'll be down for that. Wes is in the chat. He says I fly Thursday, so uh, so it sounds like I guess we're doing a show Wednesday. See, look at this. This is this is the only way I can work is when the question comes <laughs> up, we answer it then, <laughs> um, and then uh, and then obviously we're all going to be at PAX on Friday. So um, people have been asking, what are your plans? What are your plans? What are you are you going to live stream? Are you going to like do a show? Like, how is it all going to work? We don't know, but we do, we do promise you, we will make something happen. That's the that's the only thing I've got for you right now. You guys have been amazing with your generosity, amazing with your support. We we are gonna make something happen. Uh, you you got us all to PAX, and so it's the it's the absolute least we can do to make sure that we give you plenty of content from the show. So, Miles, Brian, we we have a clip of the week, uh, and we are, dude, we're so we've got so many great clips of the week uh, that go back. Like I mean, it's just I, I. So if you if you post a clip of the week in our discord because you got something funny that happened to you during game or whatever dude post it and don't expect it to be on that week's show because like we're pretty backlogged on this stuff there's really great clips over there so put it up there and then hopefully over the next month we'll use it uh and this one comes to us from distracted let's check this shit out
are you <laughs> miles are you familiar with the subreddit subreddit uh am i the asshole yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm always on. I'm always on it. Yeah, always asking. Is it, is it me or is it everyone else? That that I feel like that clip is a story that could be described on that subreddit uh, and be like, no, no, no. For the first time on the subreddit, the person relaying the story is definitely the asshole. It's like, stop trying to take shit from NPCs, dude. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, uh, we're going to take off, but thank you again for being here, and we will see you over on Discord, uh, if not on next week's show, I guess. Have a great weekend, everybody. We love you all.